Throughout the season, I've been trying to figure out who are the teams that are going to eventually make it to the NBA Finals. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that my pick to come out the Western Conference is the Phoenix Suns. However, when it comes to the Eastern Conference, I have two teams that I've been thinking of and I keep going back and forth in my head and in this video, I want to solidify who I think it's going to be. For me, it's been the Bucks and the Celtics. Those are going to be the two teams in the Eastern Conference that have a chance to make it to the NBA Finals. And a lot of people that have been commenting on my videos think it's going to be a Suns and Bucks rematch. I kind of have a little bit of an idea because Boston is doing something that I don't think we've ever seen in the NBA before and the turnaround they've made throughout the whole season is just insane and I think we need to talk about it a little bit more. I always feel like this team was talented and they had the assets to make a deep run in the NBA playoffs but for some reason they just could never click. Well it's this season where I think the Boston Celtics are going to change that and they're going to make that last push they need to make it to the NBA finals. In today's video I want to talk about the Boston Celtics and why they're my pick to come out of the Eastern Conference to make it to to the NBA Finals. Of course, before I get into the content, you guys can leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Notifications on. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers on this channel by the end of the year. Also, just like I predicted yesterday, we just hit 7,000 subscribers on the channel. So thank you guys so much for all the support recently, and I really do appreciate it. And with all that being said, run that intro. Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, but we're going to talk about them later on in the video. I think something we forget about is the fact that the Boston Celtics actually had a really bad start to the season, and you could say 2021 as a whole was just not good for this team. To finish off the year, this team was 16-19, and 19, so they were three games under 500, chilling at the 10th seed of the Eastern Conference. Now, a lot of people had no idea what was going on. They just thought, oh, Boston's having a bad season. Maybe it's because they got a new head coach. Also, we have to remember that Jason Tatum was struggling to be able to score the basketball basketball at the beginning of the year, but to be fair, a lot of other superstars were, so that wasn't really anything new. And it's not like their standings didn't tell the full picture. This team was just not good. They didn't play well, and they played very sloppy. And then we started to point the finger. Was it Jason Tatum's fault? Was it Jalen Brown's fault? Was it a bunch of other players' fault? Like, whose fault was it that the Celtics were struggling? In fact, you can go back and see in my one trade that every NBA team should make video, I said the Celtics should consider trading Jalen Brown. And it wasn't the fact that I said, oh, Jalen Brown is bad because that would be a lie. Jalen Brown is one of the best young scorers in this game. And I'm definitely glad they decided not to make that trade because as we can see, it's definitely panning out for them. There was something you could point to and that was the fact that the Boston Celtics really didn't have a playmaker per se. I mean, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, year two primary ball handlers just couldn't do that. However, there became a turning point at the beginning of the year and we started to see some flashes of Boston being a really good team. They would go on a seven game winning streak and then they would go on a nine game winning streak and then they would go 16 and 2 throughout a period of time. Mind you, all those win streaks I just talked about were in different times of the year. I mean, Boston has arguably had the best 18 game stretch in the NBA this season, going 16 and 2 from January 29th to March 11th. Now, what's kind of funny is on February 14th, I made a video called How the Boston Celtics Tricked the NBA. Because despite them finally having some success, Boston wasn't getting talked about as a real contender, and it was just, oh, they're just going on a run, but they're not going to do anything in the playoffs. Even in the NBA YouTube community, no one was really talking about the Boston Celtics at the time and saying that they were going to be a good team. Even after that video came out for almost damn near a month, the Boston Celtics would go on to just win a lot of games, like I said, having that 16-2 and two stretch. It was then around that time period where the Boston Celtics were now in a situation where they could be a top seed in the Eastern Conference and they were being talked about by everyone. But it wouldn't stop there as they would extend the stretch to go on to be 24-4 and four in the past 28 games. On top of that, during that time period, they were first in offensive rating and defense defensive rating. So while a lot of people have said that the Phoenix Suns are the best team in basketball, and I'm still going to stand by that, I think the Boston Celtics have gone a little bit under the radar. They've had stretches during the NBA season where they seem like the best team in basketball, and I wouldn't be mad at you if you told me that was your belief. In fact, one of the things that Boston struggled with was having a playmaker, and while I didn't think they had a playmaker, my mind has since changed after seeing Jason Tatum. Because the progress that Jason Tatum has made as a playmaker is one of the biggest reasons why Boston is now being seen as a contender. Now, before I get more into depth about talking about Jason Tatum's playmaking ability, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the number one brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Now, for those of you that did not know, April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Did you guys know that one man every hour every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer? In fact, testicular cancer is actually the most common form of cancer amongst men ages 15 and 35. And according to my YouTube demographic, that is a majority of you guys that 
watch my videos. The reason why I'm talking about this is because Manscaped is partnering with the Testicular Cancer Society to help those who are impacted by testicular cancer. During this month only, Manscaped is doing a special edition TCS Lawnmower 4.0. It's the same Lawnmower 4.0, however, number one, it has a different type of packaging for testicular cancer. Which, by the way, there's only 10,000 of these being made and it's special edition, so after they're gone, they're gone. They're also going to be donating $50,000 to the Testicular Cancer Society. Now, if you guys do want to make a donation to this, go to testicularcancersociety.org and I'll put it in the link in the description below as well. By the way, if one of you guys show me that you donated, please send it to me so I can give you a personal thank you for supporting this cause. As always, if you want to discount your products, make sure you use code SPECS for 20% off and thank you so much to Manscaped for sponsoring this video and guys, shave to save. Jason Tatum has really stepped up as a playmaker and like I said, that's one of the reasons why Boston has became a contender again. Now, you might go online and look up Jason Tatum's stats and you're going to see 4.4 assists per game and you're going to be like, okay, I mean, I guess that's all right. But honestly, I don't think assists tell the full story. Obviously, I'm not saying they're not an impactful stat. However, do we not remember Russell Westbrook and when he would average triple doubles every season in OKC practically? There was so much footage of Russell Westbrook obviously forcing points and forcing rebounds and then making his teammates shoot the ball so he can get assists. Like I said, I'm not saying that assists are not that impactful of a stat. However, we need to remember that there is context to every stat. And since you guys liked in the Rudy Gobert video when I showed some film, let's go over that right now. Marcus Smart is going to pass the ball to Jason Tatum and Smart is going to head open for a wing three. Now, the reason for me showing you this isn't, okay, what IQ move should he make? Because yes, he can give it to Grant Williams or Al Horford and it would be a smart play. However, Tatum is facing his defender, so he could either use the pick that Al Horford looks like he's going to set or he could just take a weird jump shot, which Tatum has had a tendency to do in the past. However, as we can see, Jason Tatum does a no-look pass. Smart gives it out to Brown and Brown has a corner three that's a little bit contested, but he makes the shot. The reason I show you this is because of the no-look pass and it just shows that Jason Tatum has got better at just making passes overall. On this clip right here, we have Jason Tatum and his defender is coming on to him. In the past, Jason Tatum would be able to recognize a blitz and find the open man. Now, obviously, I could say, oh, give it to Derek White or even give it to Peyton Pritchard. However, it would just extend the possession and it would lead to nowhere. Tatum goes up on his defender and we see we have someone else who's trying to double him. However, he now gives it to White and White's going to drive and we have Pritchard who's open for a three and he's going to make that shot. Tatum is going to need a lot more help on defense for someone to be able to contest them. So if he can get it to an open teammate and that teammate can kick it out for an easy three, which will be able to help them out in the playoffs. The progression of Jason Tatum as a playmaker, there's no doubt in my mind that this is going to be one of the biggest reasons why Boston could maybe go all the way. Now, despite talking about only Jason Tatum throughout this whole video, I want to talk about one more person that I feel like is very vital to Boston's success. Because Robert Williams is the most important part of this defense, and I feel like he doesn't get talked about enough and should be on an all defensive team, by the way. The only bad news is that Robert Williams had an injury during late March, which is going to force him to miss four to six weeks, which means he could miss the first round. And as long as Boston can make it out the first round, they're going to have Robert Williams for hopefully the second round and so on after because they're definitely going to need him. This Celtics team is talented and they have the potential to maybe make it to the NBA Finals and win the whole thing. And if Boston can stay hot like they've been for the later part of this season, who knows how far they can go.